Welcome back to the shop. It's a uh, brisk Sunday morning here. Got some more tools here. Uh, boxes just keep showing up. Let's see what we got this time. Uh, we're definitely back into the hot coffee weather. It's uh, gonna take me a little while to readjust to this cold weather. Uh, anyways, so KMS Tools had a sale on, so I managed to pick up a few things I needed. Um, just want to talk a bit about tools today. Um, I've been collecting tools since I was 10 years old and you think by now I'd have everything I need, but you know, it never fails. You either need to replace stuff that's worn out and not working or, uh, just stuff that you need for new projects. So, um, my motto has always been, you know, buy once, cry once. Um, I'll typically buy the best quality tools I can afford. Um, but that depends on what its long-term purpose is. You know, if it's something I'm going to use once and I think I can get away with just something cheap um, or stuff like this, you know, these cheap pickup magnets, you can't really get good quality ones. So, you know, buying the cheap ones until they fall apart and then you pick up another one. So I don't mind, you know, buying cheap shit for stuff like this, but if it's something I'm going to be using daily um, or on a regular basis, I'll buy good quality. But again, you know, you got to kind of be smart about it. Um, for example, this angle grinder. Um, I picked up a two pack of these a couple of years ago for 80 bucks. They're okay. I actually don't mind these little Bosch grinders. Um, I have my big Makita um, and a smaller Makita for, you know, heavy grinding and cutting. Those are my go-tos. And then I just set these ones up with flap discs, um, wire wheels and stuff like that for just lighter stuff. And I like that these ones are, you know, lighter overall. You can one hand these, so they're nice for grinding and sanding and stuff like that. You can never have too many grinders. I've got one set up for cutting, uh, one that's typically got a flap disc or a surfacing wheel, one with the uh, wire wheel, and then the one in the back there is my big uh, five inch rat tail Makita, and I keep a grinding wheel on that one, which I don't use a lot. Um, since I've started using flap discs, I tend to lean towards those, but I would like another one set up so that I can switch it between either the flap disc and surfacing or even uh, a cup disc wire wheel because depending on what I'm working on, I go between the two. So it's nice to be able to have them just all set up, ready to go on the bench there. You know, I got the power strip, plug them in. You don't have to sit and swap wheels. Yesterday I was flipping back and forth between the two wheels and I kind of forgot that other grinder showed up. So also picked up just a set of uh, cheap dead blow hammers here. These are handy to have around. This one's got the brass face on it too, which is nice. And then I spent a considerable amount of money on these. Um, I, you know, I've done minimal body work over the years. I had some old trucks and that that I fixed up, patched up, but uh, never really had any decent body tools. So I uh, splurged and bought myself some Martin. Uh, picked up a dolly as well as this little set here. So uh, it's got a, comes with a small dinging spoon, fairly lightweight. Uh, a couple of hammers as well made in USA um, I was looking at a cheap uh, you know gear wrench mix a set for about 60 bucks and everybody all the reviews and that to say they're complete garbage and uh, super soft metal that just ends up dinging up more than what you're working on so picked up these Martins um, these will last me a lifetime. I mean, that's good quality stuff. Not cheap, but you know, when you look at, you know, buying a $60 set, it's going to be a piece of crap. It's going to be frustrating to work with. Um, I don't mind spending a couple hundred bucks on some decent tools that uh, I can either hand down to my kid or, uh, you know, sell down the road and make some money back if I don't need them anymore. So as I mentioned, I've been collecting tools since I was about 10 years old, if not a bit younger. And uh, this here, this wrench set was actually one of the first sets of tools I remember purchasing. I was working on bikes at the time and there was this old guy down the road from us. I don't know if he was a retired mechanic or just a kind of a flea market sales guy, but he always had, you know, tons of craftsman tools. And I bought this craftsman wrench set and I've had it ever since, use it every day. Um, done some pretty big projects and, you know, never had anything break on me. And I do have a fair bit of craftsman stuff. It was always kind of decent middle of the road stuff. Uh, you know, pliers and that, same thing. I've had those since I was probably 13. I got them as a Christmas gift. And, uh, 
you know, that's the thing, you know, it's, I was always into it and you know, I'd get tools for Christmas. I'd buy them myself with money I got and stuff like that. And, you know, I started working at 13, saving my money and buying tools. And, uh, not many kids, you know, ask for tools and that, but I graduated from grade seven. My grandparents wanted to buy me something. said, what do you want? Pick something out of the Sears catalog. And me and me, I picked a, a large mechanic socket set, which the same thing I still use to this day. Um, you know, these aren't the greatest ratchets in the world, but at the same time, these have lasted me well over 20 years so far and still no signs of dying on me. The newer Craftsman stuff now, yeah. I've been to Lowe's, you know, look at some of that stuff. It's not, uh, it's not like it used to be, but that's pretty much true for anything. It's the same when I graduated high school too. Uh, you know, the family asked me what I wanted. They wanted to chip in and get me a, a graduation gift. And I said, hey, I could really use a, uh, you know, a bigger toolbox. So I got this uh, set and Craftsman, you know, they make okay boxes. They're not, uh, Certainly not they're worth the money that they're asking these days. Um, these are the older ones. They don't have any fancy ball bearing slides or anything. I mean, they've got these, they say ball bearing, but yeah, good enough for what they are. Um, but yeah, they've served me well and you know, they'll probably last me a lifetime. No issue. Um, I did pick up this Husky box here last year. I got a bunch of gift cards from some contractors and stuff that worked for me. And, um, these went on sale, so I pretty much picked this up for next to nothing. And I will say, uh, these ones here, I do like these drawers. Uh, they've got the kind of self-close feature there too, which is really nice. But, um, for what I paid for this, which was less than 100 bucks by the time I was out the door, um, great storage center, and I really like having the top on it as well. Air tools are also something I don't skimp on. Um, I bought my big compressor there years ago. That was an investment, but... It was the same thing, you know, I um, really wanted one. I was keeping my eye open for some sales. Boxing Dale sale popped up with one. Um, I picked that thing up for 650 bucks, which is pretty well unheard of. Um, reason being is Ingersoll apparently starts their warranty when it leaves the factory and uh, it was nearing end of warranty and they were looking to clear them out. So 650 bucks, I loaded it in my truck and, and drove it home. Um, Back in my early days, I did have a small compressor and I bought one of these cheap, uh, yeah, CH, you know, Campbell Hausfield crap. Um, seemed like a good kit at the time, you know, it came with an air hammer, uh, an impact, which died not long after that's, uh, in the scrap bin. And, um, can't remember what else it came, oh, it came with this air wrench as well, which I've had mixed mixed results with this. It's handy. I love having an air ratchet for, you know, stripping off fenders and stuff like that, but it was always finicky. I did pull it apart, clean it, lubed it, and, you know, it works fairly decent, but, um, I did upgrade the air hammer I bought in Ingersoll. Uh, this one's got a bit more jam than the other one there. This thing here, you could pretty much take that chisel out, beat it on what you're working on, probably be better. And, uh, my dying grinders are Ingersoll as well. Same thing. I use them a fair bit enough to to justify putting in the uh, extra money these are the uh kind of the pro series not the edge series which is more homeowner grade stuff but these aren't top of line either i mean you do what i need to do and then i got an air cat and an ingersoll 231 which you've seen in previous videos but that's you know i invest my money in that because when i want these things to work is because i need them so I don't mind spending money on stuff like that. Um, same goes for my welder. Um, I had a Lincoln that I bought at Canadian Tire, one of those MIG pack specials. It was a 240 version, but it just, it was okay. Got me by, but was never happy with it and ended up selling it and purchased this Miller 211. Same deal, held out, waited for a sale and managed to get enough of a rebate that I got a digitally lean helmet to go with it. So you just got to be patient. Um, you know, if there's something you want, hold out, see if you can get it at a better deal or find it used. Uh, and if there's stuff you need, just go out and buy it. It never ends. Every time you start another project, you ah, need, need another tool. So, but that's the way to do it. Don't go crazy and, you know, drop a fortune buying tools that you're not going to need right away. Get yourself set up with some basic stuff and then add on to it as you go. 
Um, torque wrenches, same deal. I don't spend a fortune on these. I use them for torquing wheels, torquing the odd fastener, but I'm not building performance engines or anything here in the shop. So these probably aren't the most accurate in the world, but I don't need a four or $500 uh, torque wrench. So one other thing I did pick up here, so I managed to get, these are uh, Crescent Nicholson files. I've had this old set, uh, good old Princess Auto, Power Fist Special. Um, these cut okay. This one did get dropped and the end dinged off of it. They've gotten me by over the years, but it's one of those every time I use them, I kind of grumble to myself that I should have bought a better set of files. So Nicholson are, you know, well-known brands. I believe these ones, what says on here? Made in Brazil. Interesting. Um, so yeah, hopefully these uh, should hold up a little better. And it's got a decent selection of files as well, so looking forward to using those. So there's one more thing to consider, and that's what's going to make your life easier. Um, if you're working on classic cars or just cars in general, um, there's three things that you really should have that will make your life so much easier. And, you know, if it's a hobby for you, it just makes it that much more enjoyable. Um, torch set, I invested in this about seven, eight years ago. I don't use it often, but when you need it and it works for you, you'll thank yourself over and over again for buying it. Um, I purchased my tanks, they're not leased, so I don't have the cost every year. And I bought a decent set of Victor, you know, name brand. Not top of the line Victor, but good enough. Um, and it's got a couple uh, brazing welding torches and a cutting torch as well. I did uh, exhaust manifolds on the 96 Ford out there, and you know, I couldn't have done it without this. Um, you're dealing with rusty fasteners, seized fasteners, heat's your friend. As the old saying can't be stuck if it's a liquid so definitely thinking about that um and another thing welder um if you can afford a welder do it doesn't have to be a fancy one doesn't have to be name brand a cheap welder is better than no welder um if you've got busted off bolts you, you know you can weld a nut on it back it out um you can weld up little parts you can make things that you need um which you know you've seen a few of the projects that we've done absolutely indispensable um I run, you know, gas, but, you know, my first welder was, like I said, cheap Lincoln, um, and I ran flux core. I couldn't afford gas at the time, and uh, I was doing it on a budget. I just needed a few small parts made up, so if you can do that, that works. Um, you can also pick up, you know, cheap stick welders. A uh, bit steeper learning curve on that, um, but you can pick these up. I picked this one up used for, I think, 100 bucks with a bunch of rods and a helmet and a bunch of other stuff. But if you're going to buy yourself a welder, it comes with some responsibility. Uh, be smart about it. You know, if the frame on your truck cracks or, you know, your control arm splits in half, don't go welding it back together, um, especially if you're not a ticketed welder. It's, you know, I make small parts. I make tools, uh, things I need. I don't do anything structural, um, especially on vehicles. You're going down the road and you kill somebody, you know, wipe out an entire family because you decided you're going to weld something together that you're not qualified to do. Uh, you got to live with that the rest of your life. So think about that. Get a welder, learn how to weld. I went to night school, took a welding course for uh, you know a couple of years. Great bit of knowledge to have and great skill to have. Third thing, air. If you can afford a decent compressor, which you know, bigger the one you can get, the better, and some decent air tools, and it'll save you so much time. Um, even just popping a wheel off. I mean, you can do it with an impact in 20 seconds. You know. You're using a friggin' lug wrench or you know a socket set it's gonna take you five minutes so we'll pretty much sum it up there like i said put some thought into it when you're purchasing tools uh just don't go out and buy the cheapest crap you can find that's on sale um there's a certain local retailer here that has their own house brand and i refuse to buy their crap um, i have in the past and each and every time i've regretted it it um It'll get you by, but there's something about quality tools that just, you know, even these tin snips here, uh, you know, I buy Wisp brand. Just, they work so much better. Um, there's nothing worse than trying to work on a project. You're fighting the tools. Um, it's just not working for you. And it just adds to frustration that you don't need. These two. Some people say Nipex. I've been told the proper pronunciation is Knipex, but these things are awesome. I mean... 
they weren't cheap. I think this pair was 30 bucks made in Germany. These things have got me out of wine more than once. So put some thought into it. And like I said, if there's you know places that you can save a few bucks. Um, my welding clamps here, I pick these things up. You get the cheap sets. Um, I don't buy, you know, name brand shit for this because, you know, they're going to get dinged up and covered in weld splatter and everything else. Um, but, you know, my MIG pliers, I bought these pair of channel locks, which um, AVE, he uh, reviewed these. He, I think he ended up with a bad set, but mine, I've had no issues with these. Uh, same thing, they've taken a beating. I've had that for quite a few years now. And uh, they work well for me. Tools can be... Uh, just as expensive as the hobby itself, I think, you know, if anything, I've probably got more money invested in tools and stuff, but it's a long-term thing. I mean, like I said, most of the stuff I buy, it's not just for one project, it's for future projects and other things I'm working on. So, and you know, it's, uh, it's an investment, but be smart about it. Put your money wherever you can on stuff that counts and, uh, you know, do what you can to save money here and there. That's it for now. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.